Well, that was inspirational in that all four of the speakers did exactly what we asked them to do. So we're off to a really good start here. And now what I'm going to do for about 15 minutes here, give or take, is to try to put a little bit of this in perspective, a little bit about what we just heard and also about where we're hoping to go um, by talking about setting the stage here. And um, I want to acknowledge um, my, my two uh, colleagues in, in putting all of these thoughts together. In fact, I call them colleagues, but they're actually the ones that do all the work. All I do is get up and talk about it. Um, because I'm a little bit funnier than they are. But probably, um, probably all of you know uh, Jennifer Shirk and, and the work that she's done. And, and you'll be seeing her. I don't know where she is. But she'll be popping up and down throughout the whole next couple of days. And, and Tina Phillips, um, where's Tina? Don't see her. Oh, there she is over here, who's the, the head of um, our DEVISE project, which stands for Developing, Validating, and Implementing Situated Evaluation Instruments. And you'll be tested on that at the end of my talk. But uh, I know an awful lot of you in the room, some of you I'm just meeting for the first time. I've been involved in this whole area now for about 30 years um, of working, working with the public. And some of you know that I, that I founded what's now called the Citizen Science Program at the Lab of Ornithology. But a few years ago, um, we started a new project, a new program at the lab called Program Development and Evaluation. And we're small but hard hitting. You've got three fifths of us here in the room. Um, and one of the first things that we did um, back in 2007, um, because we had had so much interest from the field, people asking us to help them, especially with NSF proposals, because they noticed that we'd received a number of them. Uh, we got the NSF to sponsor the first ever conference bringing together um, people who are engaged in the practice that we now call, now call PPSR. We called it the Citizen Science Toolkit Conference. And a lot of survivors of that conference are here in the room with us today. Um, I think we had probably about 130 people who uh, wanted to come to that conference, and we were able to take about 50. And out of that conference, um, we developed a proceedings that was edited by the magician, also known as Kathy McEver, um, who has uh, a, a company called the Bureau of Common Sense. And Kathy put everything from that 2007 conference into this proceedings. And we actually have a few left over, and they're out front in the box. And you can take one. If you don't want to carry it and you don't already have one, you can download it from our website. What's amazing about the work that Kathy does is this is not what we all said and did while we were here. It's what we should have said and should have done while we were all here. And it ends up really, really making us look good for NSF. Um, also out of that conference came the website citizenscience.org, which is the love and work of, of Jennifer Shirk here. Um, which we are hoping over the next few years to build into the cornerstone for a new association for PPSR, which we will be discussing also over the next couple of days. One of the things that Jennifer has recently introduced into citizenscience.org is a new community forum, which many of you participated in, in which many of you participated. Was it Winston Churchill that said that famous quote of the preposition was something up with which he would not put? Um, <laughs> But we really were appreciative of how many people signed on to the forum and spoke to each other about some of the issues that we're going to talk about over the next couple of days. And in fact, um, some of the quotes were so good that we're going to actually feature them soon. Um, now, after that conference, um, uh, a couple of years later, um, the NSF uh, got together and funded a center called the Center for the Advancement of Informal Science Education, or CASE. And one of the first things that CASE did was to commission a paper. They asked me to head it up. And it was supposed to be called Citizen Science Assessing the Field. Well, we already knew from the 2007 conference and from the people we had invited to that conference, some of them on purpose to uh, harass us. We already knew that there were issues with the term citizen science, um, sometimes because many of the participants aren't citizens. Um, and also, the whole concept of citizenship is something that you could study for, for years and years and wonder whether it's really appropriate here. 
um, although it really had a lot of cachet and had caught on, we decided quite quickly, because there are so many different traditions and disciplines, that we really needed to come up with another term. And so we decided to start using public participation in scientific research. I know it sounds horrible, a PPFSR is easier, but it really is an attempt to be inclusive and agnostic and to understand all these different traditions are all coming together. And so what we did in that report was we came up with, instead of trying to redefine citizen science or civic science or participatory action research, we thought, you know, what's going on here is that there are really so many different ways that the public can be involved in this enterprise called science. Um, there are all these different steps or stages in the scientific process, from defining a question or an issue all the way down to discussing the results. And Really, what these different projects are, are, are different ways of involving the public in one or more or different steps. There's no right or wrong. There are just different approaches here. And a lot of the projects that have been called citizen science, and to pick on Karen Oberhauser for a minute, the Monarch Larvae Monitoring Project started, it isn't now, but it started as, as one of these projects, is really about collecting data getting the public to go out and get the data that we as science and scientists and conservationists need in order to move forward. But what you can also do is you can also involve your participants in so much more. They can be helping to develop explanations. They can be helping to analyze samples and analyze data. This isn't something we invented. This is already happening. We've already just started to hear about it in some of the projects that we just uh, heard in the last few minutes. In particular, the water quality monitoring folks have been doing this for a very long time. And we decided we would call those collaborative projects. And finally, it, it came to our realization that there are projects in which the public is involved from the beginning to the end. They come up with the questions because they're very important to them or very relevant to their community. They work with scientists to come up with a scientifically valid way of studying the issue. And then at the end, they're actually doing something to try to put their results into action. And we decided to call those co-created um, co projects. And so one of the things to understand here, is, again, there's no right and there's no wrong, but with all of these projects, there are also opportunities to look and see, are you involving your participants in all of these steps? And if not, why not? Maybe there are good reasons why you don't want to, but maybe you can think about it, making the projects more inclusive. And there's a trade-off here. There's a trade-off between um, large and small. One of the projects we do at the Lab of Ornithology, the Great Backyard Bird Count, we have 60,000 people contribute data to us over four days. There's no way that we can get 60,000 people into a co-created project. But there are things that we can do with that project to make it more inclusive. And then there are a lot of co-created projects, a lot of um, projects right now that are small and local, uh, that are involving the participants in the whole process, but maybe that there's more that they could do to try to connect to the next watershed or the next state or the next country. So one of the things that we really want to do is encourage projects to be looking across the wide range of things that they can do to get their participants involved. Um, now, those of you who know me know that I cannot give a talk without talking about the circles and the arrows and the paragraph on the back of each one to explain what each one was to be used as evidence against us. And here is the slide. This is a fairly old audience. Some of you might get that. Okay. Um, so, um, and, and, and this is a slide created by, by Jennifer Shirk, um, and it has a lot of circles and arrows and paragraphs on the back. But what the point of this is, uh, sometimes this might be called a logic model, sometimes it might be called a program model, but the point of this is to say that even though we have a lot of approaches, a lot of different ways of looking at PPSR, there is one common logic model that you can look at for all of them. And so we can talk about inputs. We can talk about uh, the interests of the scientists who are trying to think about the project and what scientists would like to get out of in terms of data. But we can also talk about the interest of the public. Maybe in some project we just need them to go out and count the birds, but maybe it's a project that's really coming from the public because there's a, a water pollution issue or a clear cutting issue or something like that. So we can be talking about the different inputs that go into the project here and coming up with the question, the central question that's being studied. After we know what that question is, then we have a whole series of common activities. The project infrastructure, how are we going to manage the project, how are we going to implement it. And here we're talking about training programs, website development, trying to understand how we're going to manage all of these data. 
There is so much that goes on here in this activity column. But what we hope is the outcome of all of these, or the outputs from all of these activities, are data and experience. We hope that we're going to gather the data that we need to answer the question and move forward. And we also hope that we're going to have experiences, uh, things that happened um, to and inside the thinking of the participants. And we hope that those outputs, which are fairly easily measured, are going to result in outcomes which are harder to measure. But these are the, the more, um, the, more uh, the things that are going to really begin to change society. We're going to have more output or outcomes for science. We're going to have more data and more refereed uh, journals. We're going to uh, improve our social ecological systems so that we're actually managing them in better ways. And that individuals are going to be learning that they actually can participate in the process of science and think about themselves as scientists. And then finally, uh, that thing that we really always hope to achieve, the impact on the sustainability and the resilience and the actual conservation. So even though these projects are all very different, they do have these set of things that they all need to think about. And what we've started talking about is intentional design. And one of the things that happens with PPSR projects is there's a lot of assumption that if you build it, they will come and they will learn and the data will result and good things will happen. It just doesn't work that way. Every step of this process has to be intentionally thought about and the projects have to be intentionally designed. And we have to remember that the outcomes always feed back and we always start over again with the inputs. And so um, one of the things that, and I, I think it's going to be Meg who later on, or maybe Ed is going to get up and, and talk about how we're going to be taking some of these different projects and looking at them more closely and thinking about, we, we have a bunch of projects, including the four that you just saw already, um, who are actually going to expose their soft underbellies and allow us to look at them here and really think about how they could be improved. Um, and that's a lot of what this is, this is all going to be about. And finally, we, we do have a lot of outcomes that we can already point to. We already do have, from the field of PPSR, a lot of research that's come out in peer-reviewed journals. Um, a lot of that at the Lab of Ornithology has been spearheaded by Karen Cooper, who is, who's here in the room. We do know that we are able to engage the participants in critical thinking. A lot of the work that we've done at the Lab of Ornithology has been involved in trying to document that. Um, it was um, Karen Oberhauser who spoke about the monarchs or one of her colleagues that came up with this concept of science bonding, which we love. Um, and, and, and what she wrote about there was that the kids sometimes would come together, you know, on a front porch to have lemonade, but now they were bonding not only over the lemonade and sports, but also about science. Um, we know that environmental actions are resulting. We saw examples of that just a few minutes ago. Um, we know that social capital uh, is, is um, evolving out of these projects and can be measured, and, and Heidi Ballard from UC Davis is here in the, in the room. And we, we even know that sometimes improved policy um, is coming about. In fact, uh, one of the slides I showed you earlier, the picketers, that was actually sort of a, a, a fake slide because what those folks were really doing was taking the results of their, of their community project on hog farms and the deleterious effects of the hog farms on their, on their lungs and, and actually taking that to City Hall and getting some changes made. So we do know that there's really, really um, a whole lot of outcomes that are already happening and what we're about here is trying to see if we can get, get more. And this whole field is still in its infancy in terms of us working together to build infrastructure. There's so much happening and there's so much more that we could do. It's really just a very exciting time. And I don't have any slides to illustrate um, some of the things that are going on, but just really in a nutshell. Uh, and, and so much of this is sponsored by the National Science Foundation. And we really, really appreciate all the funding that they've, that they've provided to move this forward. Um, but there's, there's a whole movement in infrastructure right now in the field of informal science education. Um, CASE, the Center for the Advancement of Informal Science Education, is building infrastructure across the field. Uh, we're going to have an information commons pretty soon where you sign into informalscience.org or inside.org or exhibitfiles.org or citizenscience.org. You come to one common way of searching and, and trying to find um, ways of getting into those types of projects. 
I already mentioned the DEVISE project that Tina Phillips is heading up, the Developing Standardized Evaluation Instruments for PPSR. That's funded by NSF. And there'll be an opportunity tomorrow to learn from Tina and, and become involved in that project in which we're trying to develop methodologies to allow anybody to not have to reinvent the wheel to begin getting standardized baseline information from participants and then measuring change with their projects. There's a gigantic need for data management infrastructure. How can we build common platforms so that people can start these projects without having to reinvent all of these smart data forms and these ways of warehousing data? And Greg Newman, who hasn't yet been mentioned, is spearheading, uh, and Alicia Kral, who's also here, have been spearheading a lot of that work. And we'll have an opportunity to learn more about that. Data One is a huge uh, project sponsored by the National Science Foundation that's working to federate all the biological databases really in the country so that they can all speak together. That has a citizen science working group, um, which I'm co-chairing along with Jake Weltzine down here in the front of the room. And I'm sure I've forgotten to mention some of the really important infrastructure work. So we're still at the, at the beginning um, of a really exciting um, movement here.